What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up Ableton or your DAW of choice for the best possible live streaming configuration. If you are a music producer and you would like to share your production sessions online, this is hands down the best way to do it. And it'll also allow you to live sample literally anything directly into your DAW. So if you're normally scouring the internet for samples, this is going to completely change your life. If you're just a content creator or a general live streamer, but you have access to a DAW like FL Studio, Logic, or Ableton, which you can just even use the trial for, for this method, stick around because this is gonna improve your production value like tenfold. I'm gonna try to do this in one take, so please bear with me. Right here in Ableton, you see this mic track. So what's going on here is this mic is actually being sent directly to Streamlabs OBS. And this is my current mic input, right? So what does this mean? It means that I can apply any VST or effect on this mic layer, like this Interis auto tune, a studio grade auto tune, or Valhalla Vintage Reverb and Delay. 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 So these can be triggered live and they're being recorded through Streamlabs or live streamed exactly how you're hearing it within Ableton. This is an absolute mind blowing eye-opening setup because you can have various effect chains and racks and macro knobs applied to MIDI keyboards and controllers and stream decks and you can have crazy amounts of professional sounding effects triggered at your fingertips on the fly. It'll engage your audience way more. The same concept can be applied to anything on this desktop track and this is where this really shines in my opinion. I can just start recording on this desktop track and any sounds I play from Spotify or from my internet browser. What do I mean Watt by Studio, abstraction? Well, a lot of Chinese characters are abstractions. A live stream like Twitch, Insomniac Rewind. I can open up the news, uh, NFL or NBA game, whatever you want. You can record directly into your DAW just like this. So now I play it back. Boom. Here's the Twitch live stream. Fraction. Well, a lot Here's of the Chinese Alan Watt characters sample. are abstract. Here's the Spotify song. Everything's recorded, source audio, no compression, directly into your DAW, and you don't have to do any YouTube to MP3 conversions and scrub through a three-hour podcast to find the part that you want to sample. It's an absolute game changer. And like I said, you can even apply all these same effects to this. So you can be... A lot of Chinese characters are abstract. You can be live DJing, essentially, whatever you want your audience to hear. So it's such a cool setup, and I can't emphasize how many creative possibilities this opens. So now I'm going to show you how to set it up. You're going to need a USB audio interface, a DAW, voice meter banana, and Streamlabs OBS. So how do we do this? You open up voice meter banana. You need to make sure these three tracks are all at zero volume and none of these are highlighted. You don't need any of this stuff. In these two inputs, you need to have A1 selected on both and that's how you're actually monitoring. And then the B1 and B2 is the actual output. So this is me monitoring my microphone right now and this is the output, the channels they're going to. In A1, you wanna make sure that you have your USB interface selected. If it's not letting you select this, you need to make sure that you have Ableton or whatever software is taking control of your USB interface closed because you want this software to take control. And once it has control of your USB interface, it's actually creating digital in and out points that you can then route other places. So you have this all set up. You come into menu and you go to system settings and options. If you ever experience any latency throughout this process, copy my settings exactly how they are. I have zero latency and it's amazing. If you need to change the sample size, you just click on the name of your USB interface and right here you select. I have 256 samples for the most part. If it's a really intense project, I'll bump it up to like 512 or so. Oops, um, I just accidentally affected my microphone. So now you need to select input seven and eight and 15 and 16, which are these ones right here. Just count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So once you have these selected, what this is doing is it's allowing you to go into the options and preferences of your DAW 
and under the device type or the audio device, you want to have voice meter insert virtual Aussie. When you have that selected, you go to input config and you'll collect mono inputs one and two. And these are the inputs on my actual USB interface. So one is microphone, two is my guitar. And then in stereo inputs, you're gonna select seven and eight and 15 and 16. And these are the two in and out points that you selected over in voice meter banana. You're gonna copy these exact same to the output config. Okay, now you have this set up. How do you get your microphone to process your voice in Ableton? You go to insert audio track, external in one, that's your microphone, external out seven and eight and click in. Once you click in, it'll just be recording your voice all the time without actually recording. It'll just be monitoring your voice all the time, I should say. So I'm gonna turn that off because I have these compression effects on this one. And the reason I have it go to seven and eight and the desktop layer to go to 15, 16 is so that you can actually have these layers separate, which I'll show you in one sec. So now let's set up the desktop layer. You do insert audio track, external in seven and eight, because the seven and eight is actually over in voice meter. So your computer thinks that this is your speakers and which is where it's sending all the Spotify sound to. But from here, you actually have it come back into, into Ableton as seven and eight. And you want it to select as in and then external out, I'll have it be 15 and 16. And once again, that's so you can separate the layers. Um, sorry, I need to do it down here. External out 15 and 16. So now if I play some audio, it's at the same, you hear it right there. I'm gonna turn it off, just because I already have it here. I have this filter on, let me turn that off. So now, let me show you what I mean with having it on separate layers. If I want the music to be full blast in my ears still, but quiet for the audience, I just need to drag this down. So my microphone's still full volume, but the music is very low. This is helpful if you need to change audio levels on the fly. It's why I have them processed separately. If I had my microphone go up to 15 and 16 as well, now you'll see if I need to change the audio, it's going to change that microphone and the music, which I don't want. So I'll put this back to 7 and 8. Now, if I'm producing in Ableton, let me just pull out like a little sample I have, right? These little bounce chords I made. I have this just go out to master like normal, but my master I actually have set up at 15 and 16 as well. And this so that it doesn't interfere with my voice. So why don't I have the desktop just go out to master? Well, it's because if I did that, and let's say I had a master effect rack, which just for this example, I'm just gonna put something ridiculous on here called Endless Smile. So you hear the before and after, right? So the reason I don't have desktop go to master is because that effect rack on my master chain would also affect this desktop layer, which I don't want because I probably just have it playing normal sounds like Discord or, see what I mean? So that's why I have this bypass the master and go straight out to 15 and 16. External out, 15 and 16. So now it's not being affected by this anymore. Brilliant. So let me just turn this off. And that's, okay, so wait, we're not there yet. I thought that we were done. So to actually make the desktop audio work, sorry for not mentioning this sooner, you need to go into your sound settings and under output, you need to have voice meter augs output. And under your input device, you need to have voice meter augs output. So augs input for output and augs output for input. It's very confusing. <laughs> and when I first set this up myself, it took me forever to figure out what I was doing. I was just constantly selecting things. It was like a hundred questions. It was such a difficult thing for me to set up, but now I'm providing you this very informational video. So. You are welcome. Um, so yeah, you need to have voice meter augs input and then voice meter augs output. And that's what's actually sending your desktop audio into voice meter to then go in through this in and out to then come in here. So now the last step to make this all work with the streaming software is you need to select the correct audio devices in voice meter OBS or Streamlabs OBS, I'm sorry. I've taken about 100 takes of this video because I really want to do it in one take, so I am fumbling the words at this point. 
in here you come to audio and under mic auxiliary device one and device two you need to have voice meter output and voice meter augs output and that will just let you select between 7 and 8 and 15 and 16 respectively so there you have it folks i hope that you learned something new and let me just show you one quick thing um you need to remember for any applications that are going to be using your microphone, you're going to want it to select those same inputs that we just put over there, right? So you're going to want to come into your settings here and in voice and video, you want your input device to be voice meter augs output and your output device can just be default. Actually, if you have them set as default uh, in your settings over here, it'll probably work. However, I do run into some issues sometimes with them selecting the wrong ones. So you can play around with that, but the, the more important one is the input device and just make sure you have it as the voice meter augs output. And once again, it'll let you talk over Discord with all these effects you have in your microphone. Or if you're playing a game that has uh, voice chat in game, you can also put effects over your microphone and have them be applied in the game. So let's say you're like role playing in GTA online or something. You can actually apply this auto tune and you can have that auto tune being like processing your voice in the game. It makes hilarious encounters with other players in games. It makes it fun to mess around with your friends in discord. It makes live sampling stuff completely next level. And it just overall allows you to create a very high production value for your content. So Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new and that this tutorial was clear and concise. I will be back with more Ableton and Adobe Premiere, Lightroom, and After Effects tutorials in the near future. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you thought of this video. Thank you.